Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Once again, we have met by God's grace. Today is Friday, the very last Friday of the month of July. We thank God for all his mercies. We thank God for the great things he has done and greater things he's here to do. This Friday morning, I come to your homes once again with devotional as I always do. We want to take it from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 23, 22, sorry, Luke 22, 1 to 13. You could also read Psalm 142, verse 144, and then 1 Samuel, chapter 9, verse 1 to 14. We dwell in the book of Luke. Now, it says that Luke 22, now the feast of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover was approaching. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how they might put him to death, for they were afraid of the people. And Satan entered into Judas, who is called Iscariot, because belonging to the number of the twelve. And he went away and discussed with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. And he consented and began seeking for a good opportunity to betray him. For them, apart from multitude, then came the first day of the living bread on which the Passover lamp was to be sacrificed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for it that they may eat. And they said, Where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you crying, carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house that is entered, that he enters and goes on and forth. We want to learn about the character of Judas this morning. The Bible says that it is a time for the Passover on living bread. That is a festival they do celebrate. And the chief priests were looking for an opportunity to put him to death. And the third verse is very critical. It says that Satan entered into Judas, who is called Scarlet, belonging to the number of 12. Jesus worked with 12 disciples. They are his closest people, his closest cycle, his friends. And the Bible says that the chief priests wanted to put him to death. Now, they are looking for somebody close to him to use because they can't use somebody outside. It even goes on and says that they are afraid of the multitude because the multitude even trusted in him. But Judas is the one among the twelve who allowed himself to be used by Satan. And that is what brought the death of Christ. I don't know the extent to which you allow yourself to be used by the enemy this Friday morning. But most of the time when the enemy is looking for somebody to devote, it comes to the person's closest people that they work with. In this case, it was Judas. There are a lot of times the enemy has targeted people, and sometimes some of us find ourselves in the means that the enemy uses us. But as a disciple, you can be a Christian, but the devil can still use you. It is when you allow yourself. Peter was moving with the disciple. At the same time, he was friends with this chief priest who wanted to put Jesus to death. So it tells us one thing, that sometimes the crowd that we work with, the people we work with, they, 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 they advise us wrongly. How can you be a disciple of Christ and still make friends with those who hate Christ? Of course, the enemy will use you. So we should watch our path very careful. Those we work with, we say we are Christians. Let's work with like-minded persons. Some of us go to church. We do all things Christians do. When we come back, we sit with people who who, 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 who misbehave and call the name of Christ in any way, anyhow. That is why it tells us in Psalm 1. It says, Blessed the one that watches the way he walks, the place he sits. And the people that he talks to, these three things, we have to be careful. Because the enemy is always going around looking for people to use. He can use you to bring somebody down. He can use you to destroy it. It depends on you allowing him. How do you allow him? The people you work with. If they tell you the things that are negative, it fills your heart. It, 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 it fills your mind. And then the enemy takes care of you. Because you have given your way, leeway. This morning, be spirit-filled. Let everything you do deal towards Christ, deal towards the right people, work with the right people, like-minded people, work with people for the place you want to go. 
Judas was chosen by Christ, so he was a disciple. He was supposed to be with them 24 hours. Even if he lived, they had to bring people with the same mind. But he went to work with those who are seeking to betray and put Christ to death. And this is how the enemy used him. The enemy is always roaring in and around. Don't allow yourself. It is a Friday as you go into the weekend. Work with the right people. Be right-minded. So if the enemy is looking for a way, he will come and there will be no way. Christ said, he said, the prince of this world came, but he found nothing in me. Is that the same thing you can say this Friday morning? If the devil is to come today, will they find something in you to use? Don't allow yourself. Thank you very much. It's a Friday morning. Let's remind ourselves that the enemy is looking for people to use. Let it not be you. Stay in touch with God 24 hours 7 and be the Christian God wants you to be. And when it comes, you not be the Judas, but you be the one who will stand by him to the end. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll meet again. Bye-bye.